Hi all and welcome back to my second in-depth devlog about Wimpy, a tool for creating rooms in point and click adventures. Well, I would not be a very serious game dev if I don't tell more about my morning routine. I'm an early starter and start around 5.30 with a cup of extra strong coffee and then I immediately head to the gym. Ah, yeah, uh, you got me there. So, what to expect from this devlog? Well, first, a little bit of history about this tool and its initial purpose. Secondly, I will tell you how I hacked this into my own game engine. Because, why not? Third, I will tell you about how to use it and what it can do for you. So, without further ado, let's get started. Wimpy is a versatile tool. It's used for creating rooms in point and click adventures, as exemplified in Thimbleweed Park. The team that made it, Ron Gilbert and David Fox, used it to whip up rooms quickly in Thimbleweed Park. It uses some kind of JSON based format to store the data, and it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of craft in the format, and it's easy to understand. So they gave away this tool? Why? They're commercial. Well, they're nice people. And they wanted to give something back to the community. They released a small point and click adventure with one character in it, Dolores. It's a small game, but it's a great example of what you can do with Wimpy and the Thimbleweed Park engine. I will share a link to the project down below. Unfortunately, if you make a point and click game on top of Terrible Toybox engine and release it, then that is not allowed. But for me, it was a godsend, because I could use the Wimpy editor, nonetheless, to create rooms. But you might say, I don't have an engine, I don't want to build an engine, or even have the skills to make one. However, I did find a great engine online that is called NG2. I will share a link to that project down below. It looks feature complete, so if you have made something nice, in the Thimble, Thimbleweed Park Dolores Dev engine it will probably work just fine. Getting a wimpy room in the editor is simply dragging it into the window. Loading a room is a little bit finicky, as you need at least some sort of starter file to get going. The other thing that you need is a sprite sheet put together in a format JSON hash. The name of the sprite sheet should be linked to the first wimpy field. What a wimpy thing to do. One of the reasons I'm also making this video, by the way, is that I'm getting sick of finding pages with diary of a wimpy kid. Those books are too damn popular. So I thought myself, why not make a quick guide myself? So I can always look it up when I need it the most. So finally, it's time to do something with the editor. So how do you move around the room, you ask? Press space, hold it, and then move the mouse. And you will be dragging around the room. So next thing is looking at objects. You have a nice search bar at the top. That really comes in anyway if you have a lot of objects. You can also toggle on and off every object in the scene. So how to add objects and place them in your room? Wimpy already has a list of assignable sprites for you to use. That was of course taken from the sprite sheet, or texture atlas if you prefer that term. Well, hit N and the tool will come up with a beautiful square box. Not only that, but also a crosshair and a line stretching across the room that you can slide. The bounding rectangle can be used for various purposes. My use in the engine is to be able to quickly have an interactable zone for that object. The crosshair is to signal a point where the player can interact with the object in the room. Very handy. And the line? The line will just come up in its own section, Z ordering. Well, that section came quick. Well, 
As you can see here, Rick and Morty should be behind the desk in the garage. So we need to fix that. But how? I need some sort of extra information. Z ordering to the rescue. Z ordering is the order in which objects are drawn into the world. And why is it called Z actually? Well, you could consider that 2D games deal with X and Y, and this Z value is some sort of representation of a virtual axis that is defined by an ordering number. Huh? Wait, that didn't sound right. Well, you could consider that two games deal with X and Y, and this Z value is some sort of representation of a virtual axis that is defined by an ordering number. In other words, you can manipulate the order in which things are displayed. So that horizontal line in the editor, that's actually doing the same as a painter would. First they paint the background, then the middle ground, and then the trees. So the more you drag this line to the bottom, the more the object will be in the foreground. And the lower the value is, the more the object is in the foreground. It corresponds to the virtual Y position. And in this case it maps 1 to 1 in a range of nil till 768. I've made this scene a classic 1024 by 768 that is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So why the choice for this low resolution? Isn't 16 by 9 in a 4K resolution full screen not much better? Well, for me, it was purely a design choice to keep 4x3 and 1K, as I feel that my game lends to a quick game experience that can be slotted in between work. And it runs in windowed mode. I always hated the full screen switch myself for a quick session, just because of the hassle trying to switch back to Windows again. It should be for the player as if you would play this in your browser and then after that get on with your own stuff. So, this was a long diversion into Z ordering, but that's an important part of a successful engine. So no rushed business there. So that line is draggable and controls the draw order. And the crosshair, you might say, well that's the spot where you can guide your girl or gal when you plot out the movement towards the objects. So let's do this for the vending machine in the corner. Dragging the horizontal line for Z ordering first, then cropping the bounding rect, and then dragging and setting the crosshair for the hotspot XY position. There are two other props, spot and trigger, and those ones I will talk about later. So now on to another feature we can't live without, walk boxes. Walk boxes in WIMPy are in fact a set of points that could make up what they call in Blender an N-Gon plane. These were not very common in the past, as collision in a convex polygon plane was much faster because of the underlying mathematics. I will not delve into deep into that as I wanted to show you how you can make a walk box and then show you the points. So hit W to get a starting square, right click in the middle of a line to add a vertex and drag away. A walk box is then made up of a set of vertices, not vertexes. Although, vertexes is actually a good idea. Well, let's add some more points and drag them into the wanted position. By the way, right click can also be used to remove a vertex. Well, one thing left and that is adding animation frames from the sprite sheet, or atlas if you will, to animation events. Actually they can be called an animation event collection of a set of frames. If you click on the loop checkbox, it will continuously play. In my room I don't want this, but I will show it here, otherwise you won't see it. So how to make a new animation event? Well, let's say we call the new event um, copyright. Then we drag in the frames into that new event, one by one. And then we would already see some animation playing now and then. You can increase the frame number per second and the animation goes then 
much faster. And you can also go below 1 if it's a very slow animation. 1 is fine for this animation actually. But oh no, it's spinning out of control. Oh, what to do, what to do. Well, actually this is a, a bug. If you click on the loop check marks, it will reset to the correct speed. Well, that was it for now. And don't, don't you forget to subscribe. And don't you hate that white blob destroying your precious eyes by his radiation? Hit it and it will be gone. And check out the other videos and voice acting reels too.